Good afternoon, Golden Street Realty community. Today, I am so glad to announce we are joined by a special guest. This is Ferdy Ong, the owner of Living Innovations, and this is actually where we're stationed right now. So, Ferdy, if you want to introduce yourself a bit and give some insight on Living Innovations. Hi, my name is Ferdy. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. My company has been in the business for 20 years, 20 plus years already. So we carry most certain brands would be Minotti, we carry Gagano, we carry Voltop, we carry Bang Olsen. So these are some of the brands that we carry. We're lucky that Ferdy is going to show us around the Living Innovations showroom today so we can get a better idea on what Living Innovations is about and what the agenda is for you know hosting and distributing also luxury furniture brands so let's get started okay so i just want to introduce you this sofa first uh so the sofa is called the roger um this is typically what we would propose for a living room set mm -hmm. um so as you can sit in the sofa uh you see how the arms are uh, created, how the structure is created, so that's how pretty much the, uh, this would be our first set in, a, in the Minotti space. So actually prior to the interview, Ferdy was showing us sort of a demo on how, what the difference is when sitting in different parts of the couch. Yeah. And I feel like that would be good to also show the audience and be able to explain further. When you sit on the sofa, ideally, um, the weight of the sofa would be um, on your behind but when you sit on a Minotti sofa ideally it transcends it it spreads the weight to your back uh, you know if it's a real Minotti sofa is that you sit like this wherein it's a little bit inclined wherein mm. the weight is distributed at the back so you can sit longer at the same time when you sit up and stand up the sofa will go back into shape it's interesting because when you talk about this sofa there's obviously a lot of attention to detail and that's something that no one would really notice at like at first glance or mm -hmm. even think to pay attention to so my question for you is actually how you would define what characterizes luxury furniture because i feel like it's sort of a misunderstood concept mm -hmm. i think people see luxury and just think of lavishness and glamour and expensiveness but actually when you explain it it's much more deeper than that so if you could elaborate on my question well, um, <laughs> i think it would be craftsmanship and how they build for example the whole base of this whole thing um, it may look simple but it's all extruded aluminum at the base right. so then it doesn't corrode it's much more uh, long lasting at the same time all the pieces of the sofas would have goose down feather in them so they're channeled together so that uh, they look fluffy and, and nice and tailored all at the same right. time uh, secondly another thing is that you know with with quality i think with a nice sofa you'll be able to have these for years mm -hmm. compared to something that Ooh, maybe that looks be. like I mean, not the sofa, but right. is a replica. They maybe last a year and then you'd have to change again. But I think with quality, like when you buy clothes and shoes and, and bags, uh, something of nice quality will last you a lifetime, mm. so. Nice, so I guess you would put it in terms of like standards of um, luxury goods. It would be craftsmanship in terms of the quality put into it and also like longevity factor. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, I'm excited. I want to see actually like the whole place. Yeah. yeah I'll show you around. So um, this, this set is called the Goodman. Okay. So uh, something distinct about this space is, is the sofa set is that it allows like a, 
Uh, imagine yourself in like a hotel lobby mm -hmm. or a big house where you're able to create dynamic sets of spaces wherein you can communicate. So, wow. for example, when you're entertaining typically on a big party, mm -hmm. um, you can easily sit here wherein uh, I'd be talking to you and you'd be sitting there. So we'd be conversing, but at the same time, when you look at the person right beside, then you can still talk to them on the other side, right? So I think yeah. that's something different between the space. Right, but at right. the same time, this area, imagine this would be your pool. It doesn't block the view out here. Right. Uh, and at the same time, that's where this space provides value. So we have little pockets of spaces that can create conversation, but at the same time, this space is very modular that you can move it around and twist it around so it can face different yeah. people. Yeah. It takes into consideration also like all parts of the space regardless of whether it's inside or outside. Like, yes. I think what one thing that you said that really just stuck to my head is that the, this piece of furniture is designed for interaction. Yes. So in essence, that's what also could add to what luxury furniture is and the difference between that and just something that's a little more ordinary mm -hmm. is that it's trying to communicate and design that for people's lives as well. well for sure the function yeah. is much more important but also the flexibility so these things are in modules so next time you move to a different space mm -hmm. you can bring them around and rearrange them to fit your space so for example you're there now right now there it can be a formal living room but if you want then you can sit here like you want to sit here then it's like a chase lounge and you're watching tv but if you're in a formal yeah. setting that you can have it here and sit here uh straight up so yeah. it really depends so like you're there now i can sit here but still be able to converse with you like right this. right so i think that that kind of uh, logic i think that kind of uh, philosophy is what the brand tries to establish especially when you create little spaces like this it's just not randomly put there everything yeah. has a function right everything has a purpose and so mm -hmm. that's why i think that, that that's how they thought about it when they when they were creating it mm -hmm. so interesting so I'll, I'll show you the other room okay okay i think this room um this room, uh, the sofa is created by a Brazilian designer. The it's name is Marshall nice. Kogan. Uh, but the distinct space, so he's Brazilian, she look very mi modern mid-century. But at the same time, I want to highlight the, the height of the table. Mm -mm. The height of the table is 66, so if it's 66 cm. So it's not the typical height of the a dining table. So when you sit there, and like, uh, for example, uh, then we're talking and dining around. This can right. be a computer table. You can dine here, but at the same time, you're talking to the person right across, but you're in the same eye level. Yeah. So, I actually have a random question related kind of to the table. What I notice commonly in Philippine households is like you don't actually see a lot of round tables for eating mm -hmm. particularly. Maybe that's just me though, but I wanted your insight on, in terms of the shape of the table, what do you think is more ideal circular or rectangular oh it depends on how you use the space right. i think we have clients who want a rectangular table because they find it more formal mm -mm. they have a waiter serving yeah. them or they may serve them on the right and then that's how they yeah. usually do things but on an asian kind of family yes. they like the round table they like the um being able to see each other and talk like to each other person. and serve. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it really depends uh, but I think now the the, the the people are now more particular in how they purpose, they, they create the purpose for the right, space. So right, right. if it's a space for a meeting or a space for dining, yes. a, an informal dining, mm -mm. breakfast note, then it would depend. Uh, but yeah, so it's really preferential depending on the clientele.